Hello and welcome back to UMass Sports Weekly and I'm Chris Corso here with Joey Sade, one of our veterans and he's back from the Boston Globe and Liam Byrne in his first year he did a great job filming the game over at women's soccer this week so we're here to talk a little women's soccer and they played one game this weekend and went to double overtime which was a great game and it ended up in a minute, w minute women win and uh, Liam you were there to shoot the game so uh, what was so special about this game? Well about uh, what's special about this game was that uh, it was a non-conference game uh, with a crowd of 265 at Rudd Field. Uh, the first half, both teams uh, weren't really offensive. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of corner kicks from UMass. They had 10 corner kicks uh, to UNH's two. So it made it known that UMass really wanted to win this one. Um, sophomore forward Megan Burke, uh, she was crowned last week's uh, UMass Athlete of the Week. Uh, she's also the UMass's leading scorer. Um, she was a part of the highlight earlier, and uh, she played very well. Uh, she had good looks to her teammates uh, on some close goals that UMass should have scored. Um, but, you know, as, as you can tell, they, they did win. Um, so, yeah. That's great. And, uh, Joey, to you, um, what, what are some expectations we have for this team this season? They're 2-3-1. Um, a slow start, kind of like last year. They haven't really broken out in the past couple of years. They've really just been a mediocre team under coach Ed Matz. What are the expectations for the team this year? Well, looking at the makeup of this team, they're similar to last year. They only lost three seniors from last season's squad yep. that made it to the 8-10 semifinals and a tough one nothing loss to LaSalle, who was you know, ranked as one of the better teams in the country. So that was a pretty good fight they gave up at the end of last year. They only lost three seniors. They bring back their starting goaltender, Danielle Krasinski, who was a redshirt freshman last year, and she was phenomenal. Um, she was, I mean, she kept them in every single game. She's back this year. She started the first five games this year, and they added a new freshman goalie, they Cassidy did. Benton. Mm -hmm. um, last year, they, they only had Danielle on the roster as the only goalkeeper. Wow. So she had no competition in practice. So maybe adding this freshman will do something different for them. For sure. But, you know, looking at the strength of this team, um, I think you have to go with the defense and the goaltending. You know, last year, they only allowed... 1.2 goals per game, and this year they're kind of on that pace with 1.1 goals a lot per game. I know it's early, but that's kind of what it seems like they're going to be keep on doing because that's just the makeup of their team. You know, between talking to Ed Matz the last year, you know, he's primarily focused on defense, and that's kept him in every single game. And through six games this year so far, they played in five overtime games. So that tells you that you know offensively they're not there yet, but you know they're but defensively. They're playing very competitive. Yeah. yeah. So sure, they sure. they have they're very competitive this team. They've been in pretty much every game so far, and Ed Matz is obviously a veteran coach. He's been with the team for a while, so he knows how to handle this team by now. You talked about the uh, redshirt freshman goaltender who had a great season last year, so hopefully she'll build on it this year. Now, Liam, is there a player that you think will really stand out this year for the team? Absolutely. She definitely stood out in uh, the game against UNH, and that player is junior forward and co-captain Jackie Bruno. Uh, she was explosive right out of the gate. Um, and she, she was um, very, very uh, good with her passes and her, her shots. Uh, she contributed to the, the penalty that made Megan Burke take her shot. Uh, she also sealed the deal for UMass as well uh, in the 103rd minute. And she took 10 shots the whole game. And that, that was more than, almost one less than UNH's. Um, she was actually named this week's UMass Athlete of the Week, so she'll be honored. Uh, I think this week, and um, so I, I think alongside with Megan Burke, ooh, excuse me, Megan Burke, and um, I think those two will really trigger UMass's season from from here on out. That's great, and yeah, Jackie Bruno has been with the team for a couple of years now. I've seen her play while covering the team for uh, for the Collegian, and she's definitely an explosive player. She's now an upperclassman and a captain of this team, so I really do see her as one of the key scorers and key attackers on this team. But now, Joey, we've talked about the strengths and the weaknesses of the men and women. What do you expect this team to, where do you expect them to finish uh, when the season's at its end? Well, last year they finished in you know, the upper half of the Atlantic 10 standings, and I, I picture them to do the same thing this year. Um, like I said earlier, the makeup is pretty much the same. They only lost three seniors, uh, which were big. You know, they lost their best defensive player, Lawrence Kasavage, and their leading goal scorer, Brittany Moore, who had only scored eight goals. So. Like we said earlier, goal scoring is going to be at a premium for this team. They're going to have to find ways to score more goals Absolutely. as the defense plays well. But, you know, from last year and, you know, certainly the beginning of this year, they've been in every single game. 
Uh, like I said, they've played five overtime games out of six games. They've only allowed 1.1 goals per game. So if they can find a way to find the back of the net, um, I think they're going to be there right, you know, right at the top of the 8-10 standings. Well, scoring has definitely been the problem for, for the men and women in the past couple of years, not just this year uh, itself. So if they can find a way to put the ball in the net, as Joey said, I think that this team could really compete with the other uh, teams in the A-10 and maybe finally uh, break through and hit one of those top teams and give us a championship for women's soccer. So, so. But uh, thank you guys. Thank you, Joey, and thank you, Liam. for uh, You guys did a great job and a great job with the package, Liam. And we'll be back with some uh, UMass men's soccer.